So we're doing the design and construction of the sediment control research lab. Um, I don't know if you all like, heard about this. The purpose of this was just to provide a, um, a research facility to go along with Kelly's group and the, on, and the siphon spillway that's been here. Uh, it's mainly going to be for the use of the grad students. Um, the, our objectives were to give them the, an economical lab to stay under budget. Um, because it's on the dairy farm, it had to be uh, easily removable, just in case they ever uh, had to like, take over the sand, I guess. Again. So the concrete pad, I mean, that would be the only thing that is permanently here. Uh, and also we had to size and uh, size and come up with a way to power it. And uh, as y'all can see, we chose the generator route. Uh, another option was actually to go through the Duke and have poles. But, I mean, just because you wanted easily removable and the expenses, it didn't work out. Um, our location obviously is right here. Um, it's just, when we first came out here, um, we kind of, me and Christian came out here and kind of did survey um, and found the most level ground we could find out here so we wouldn't have to move as much dirt. Um, we came out here and shot, um, we kind of laid it out off the fence and shot the four corners with a level and a level rod. Um, this is where we um, borrowed a skid steer from the dairy and came out here and just cut a little bit off of the side of the hill and just back, uh, back drug it to this corner of the building. Um, and then we um, uh, framed it up for the concrete and came in and made a fabricated a metal packer and packed it by hand, which is pretty tough. Um, and then we put down this plastic film just so the concrete would not be touching um, the soil so I could easily remove it. Uh, our foundation is 12 by 16 by 4 at 4 inch concrete. Um, and then we also made a pad for the generator, which is three by three, and also four inches thick. Um, it was three cubic yards of concrete. Um, these are our anchor bolts that we put in. Um, we just kind of spaced them out, um, roughly about the same. Uh, what y'all see here, this is like our design calculation. So like when we were putting them in, like in the next picture you can kind of, one of these pictures you can see. Like right, we had to like equally place them just so you didn't come in like problems with the studs because the bolts had to be put in when the concrete was wet. <laughs> we didn't have any studs or anything up by then. It's so like the, that picture before was just the calculations that we had so that we knew where to put them while we were pouring the concrete. Uh, this is our foundation budget. Um, we spent roughly about $500 um, for the concrete foundation. Um, this is just a picture of us just um, finishing touches on the concrete pad. This is another picture of the concrete pad. And these are where we put the anchor bolts. We just waited till it was dry enough to where they would stand up by themselves and we just placed them in based on our calculations where they go. Uh, we used the study wall format and the Pickens County, according to the Pickens County code. Uh, we built the walls on the ground and stood them up and bolted them down. This is the south wall. It's our original draw. Nothing changed on that. Uh, bottom plate was pressure treated, and top plate we did an overlay. And that's the north wall. And we notched out right here for the um, middle wall, dividing the storage and research parts of the building. This is the um, east wall. And that's for the air conditioner hole when they decide they want to put it in. Uh, and all, the, all these pictures right here, I know they're pleasant to see. Like, these are our theory and calculations right here. I mean, y'all saw these in the, the second presentation. I mean, there, nothing changed except for like what he said was the air conditioner change. Uh, and uh, this, we was gonna have it, we were going to put a double door on the storage side, but we had a bunch of leftover T11, and we just thought it would be simpler to make it a single door. It was like $200 cheaper just to build the door with the leftover material than to buy the 400 double door. And I mean, it met the same requirements, just having a big enough door to get like the tank in, the generator in, and that kind of stuff. And here's a picture of us when we got the walls up. And oh, there's a picture when we're putting the first one up, or doing the first one. All right, this is our roofing system. It's basically just the calculations we came up with. Anyway, we uh, decided to do a 412 ditch on the roof. Um, 
We took two by fours and used some brackets and mounted them on top of our top plates in the center of our walls. Took a two by eight, 18 feet long, or one 10 feet long, one eight feet. Ran it across the top, uh, took a square, made our four 12 uh, cut on them, on the two by sixes and mount them. Um, we got our ceiling joists spaced out maybe 24 inches for code. And you can see we just uh, turned out the two by six to the two by eight right there. We ended up didn't have to do the bird's mouth on our two by six. We could end up uh, laying it on top of our top plate because uh, code allowed us to because we didn't have uh, a great deal of load on our ceiling. And this is our uh, softening. We used to the light uh, vinyl softening. We took our measurements, made our cuts, and then we took some metal and went to the shop and uh, bent it uh, according to our width and uh, kind of made it tighten up a little bit, make it look a little better. And this is our gable vent we chose for each gable. We got one on the other side as well. Yeah, this is everything in our frame budget. It came out uh, about $2,100. Uh, interior, uh, we put a wall up to separate the storage room and the research part of the building. We used a quarter inch glue wall for uh, the walls. Looking back, we would have used a different siding because it was really thin, flimsy, hard to work with. And we used two by two ceiling trim in the research part of the building. All right, the interior budget, the fasteners were included in the framing budget, so just the Luan siding was about $220. Uh, I mean, next is electrical. The computer's a little slow, so I think I'll just run through it real quick because you'll be able to walk inside and see it. Um, like I said earlier, we had the generator as our power source. So we used the Ag Wiring Handbook and size everything. From the generator to the breaker box is an 8 gauge, 8 3, so it has three powers. And when we actually get to the breaker box, instead of powering the rods, we use a 60 amp breaker because um, the generator holds 66 amps as its max. So we have our max is at 60 amps is when the, if the building ever gets that high it flips the breaker and turns the power off. And that's what we actually powered and since it's a double pole breaker, the breaker is actually is acting more of an inlet like the power is coming in through the breaker and powering both rods and that way all the other breakers we put in that's where the power is coming from. And the rest of the breakers are all 20 amp which is, exceeds what we needed uh, just for safety reasons. Um, all the wiring you'll be able to see, like from the storage room, you'll be able to see how we installed it, just drilling through the studs, uh, use the sockets, like typical sockets. Uh, only one socket has a greater uh, amperage, and that's just the air conditioner. <laughs> <laughs> Got that, <laughs> <laughs> All I gotta say is don't go anywhere near it. Oh, oh, hey, hey. I don't think you got, I got it on video if anybody is killed. It? No. <laughs> Wait. One more time. He's got to reload. He's just reloading. <laughs> I've never taken that many shotgun shells turkey up before. I'm just going to throw that out. <laughs> <laughs> I guess we're pretty much done. Let's put any other questions y'all have. Y'all can walk around, walk, walk through. Around. I guess ask questions. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking, Let's go inside. I was like, Crank it up first. <laughs> Yeah. 